Hey Ryder, I'm Kristen Salvatore. I'm here with Evan Handler from Sex in the City, and he's here to talk about his new book, It's Only Temporary, The Good News and the Bad News of Being Alive. Evan, thanks so much for sitting down with us tonight. Can you tell us a little bit about your new book? It's called It's Only Temporary, The Good News and the Bad News of Being Alive. Um, it's a follow-up to a book I published 12 years ago that was called Time on Fire, and that book told the story of how I got well from a supposedly incurable illness, mm -hmm. acute myeloid leukemia. Um, and the first book, I guess, was a very uh, angry young man's account of how much more difficult surviving the incurable illness was made than it needed to be. And uh, a lot of my complaints about the medical systems that I ran into. Um, this is a book from 20 years down the line about a guy who knows he should feel lucky to be alive, but who still takes a good part of those 20 years to really experience consistent gratitude and contentment in the life he knows he's lucky just to be living. So uh, uh, it kind of goes hand in hand with my search for love and eventually finding my wife. So there's a lot of stories of um, ridiculous relationships and bad dates. And, and uh, one of the pieces talks about my 27 breakups, which were spread over only 10 relationships. So uh, I averaged 2.7 breakups per relationship. Your first book, it was originally written for a stage play, is that correct? Well, I wanted to write a book, and at that time I was known pretty much around New York as a stage actor. I had done a bunch of Broadway plays. So I wrote a really condensed version of the story and performed it off-Broadway on, on stage, hoping to get publishing world attention, and that's pretty much exactly how it worked out. So I did that and it got really good notices and then got a deal to publish a book and then told the story in a much expanded way uh, which wasn't so difficult to accomplish because I really condensed it for the stage play specifically. The first book was also um, recognized by the um, Sundance Institute Screenwriters Lab. Well, I wrote a screenplay adaptation that I submitted there and got accepted to go workshop it there. Um, Robert Redford started these uh, Sundance programs, the screenwriters lab and the director's lab. Um, so I was really fortunate. I have been a participant a lot as an actor at both the playwright's lab and the screenwriter's lab. So that was a really terrific experience. You get to go there and uh, have it dissected and pulled apart by very renowned filmmakers and screenwriters. Um, so I really value that Sundance stuff a lot. Are you still working with them on the screenplay? Uh, no, I mean, it's not an ongoing way. They, they do certainly try to give you support and help you get it produced. Um, that screenplay was set up to be produced somewhere with somebody else directing it that turned into a not great situation. Actually, it's, it's one of the stories in the new book mm -hmm. is, is, is about how I try, had to, um, I had to endure threats of legal action from people who claimed they had the right to tell my life story in movie form, even though I, I didn't want it done mm -hmm. anymore. Uh, so, um, that's a screenplay that now I possess and, and hopefully will get to do someday as a movie. What, now, what prompted you to write the first book? Like, what made you really want to um, get the story out? A couple of things. One is I kind of disappeared from view at 24 mm -hmm. um, and reappeared closer to 30. Uh, and I had spent that time in hospitals fighting for my life. And when I came out and was around my peers, they had had different experiences for the last four or five years. So I felt a lot of people looked at me and kind of would whisper to each other, well, what's with that guy and what made him the way he is? And I thought maybe telling the story of where I had disappeared to might act as a bridge between me and those people. And that actually was pretty successful. But also, I had gone away and fought what felt to me like a covert war. Like most people are lucky enough not to know what goes on inside those hospitals and, and how brutal those systems can be. And uh, I wanted to bring it out to the light of day. And, and make a lot of comments about aspects of it that weren't the way that I thought it should be. Besides that, when I was diagnosed, I really wish I had had someone that I could have looked at and seen, uh, well, that person has something just as bad or worse than I do, and he or she got well, and I didn't see anyone like that. So uh, I've tried ever since to at least, as I've become more visible, let it be known where I was so whoever out there might be suffering through whatever can at least look at somebody and say, oh, well, you know, that guy was given a supposedly insurmountable thing and, and, and he got past it and is doing well. So um, perhaps I can too. Um, now, I know you're probably most well known for your role as Harry on mm -hmm. Sex and the City, but right. you've, you've been in various TV roles and films. Is there a role that really sticks out in your mind? I'm having a great time right now on Californication. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a show on Showtime that actually premieres this coming Sunday, the uh, 29th, 28th of September. 
Um, uh, I, we completed our first season and it aired. It's now available on DVD and on iTunes. Um, we only do 12, 12 half hours. And I, I think it's really funny. It's a very funny yeah. sex comedy. Um, so if you're interested in sex, there you go. Uh, <laughs> um, and it's been great for me. It's been a really free atmosphere. There's a lot of freedom to ad lib and it's just got a lot less of the uh, uh, anxiety and pressures of other jobs that mm -hmm. I've had. Uh, I also really enjoyed, although it was just a one spot thing, was going down to Hawaii and doing Lost for one yeah. episode. Uh, I wasn't really a watcher of the show before, but I started to watch them in real concentration when I got asked to do that and uh, loved it. And so that was, that was really a lot of fun as well. Going back to Sex and the City really fast, uh, obviously the fan base for that show is women. Uh, have, do you have any interesting fan stories or like fan encounters? Um, I mean, I get approached all the time. Um, and uh, my wife is from Bologna in Italy. So first it was just in the United States. Then in the big cities in Italy, I started getting recognized. And now in her tiny little hometown of Molinella. Um, so that's been very interesting. Um, also, once in New York, I was riding the subway and like a pack of 12, 15 year old girls came over to me and said, oh my God, sex in the city, you're huge in London, you, how come no one's paying attention to you? How come no, so uh, that was just kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, well, if I, if I need a bunch of 15 year old girls, I can go to London, I guess. <laughs> and you were also on Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip, which yeah. I loved that show when it was right. on. Um, and you played a, a writer for a TV show, and mm -hmm. I know you'd done some screenwriting before. Yeah. Was it interesting to play that out in a role? Because you've done that? Um, hmm. I didn't really connect them. You know, Aaron's a great writer, and uh, so, and I think he was writing about his experiences, not mine, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. So, uh, and I think a lot of the stuff swirling around that show was so much about the intrigue of who is this in Aaron's life and who is that that it kind of overshadowed anything in my life. You mentioned before you, you, you had done theater, kind of started in theater, yeah, right? Yeah. Is it something you think you want to go back into at some yeah, point? Yeah, I mean, I, I still consider that I do it periodically, although I guess the last time I did a play was five years ago, just before the last season of Sex and the City. Cynthia Nixon and I did a play mm -hmm. uh, by a great friend of mine named Jackie Reingold, who's a terrific playwright, and actually anybody college age should know because she wrote a lot of plays with, with young female characters. Mm -hmm. This one was one about a woman about to turn 40 years old called String Fever. Um, but she writes really, really good, strong plays, a number of which are published. I read that you've done uh, several Neil Simon plays. Mm -hmm. Is there something about his, his writing and his playwriting that really you're drawn to? Well, I mean, you, you know, he hasn't had recent successes, but when growing up, he was like the comedic Shakespeare of, of, of our day. I mean, he was so prolific and had so many very, very successful commercial plays. Um, I was diagnosed while I was understudying in Biloxi Blues mm -hmm. and then got back on Broadway in Broadway Bound when I had a recurrence of the leukemia. So um, now I consider Neil's place carcinogenic and I'm not sure I would do another one. So you seem to have really like dabbed into every aspect of the entertainment industry. Is there one aspect you enjoy more than the other? The one that I've done the least of is the one I most would like to do more of, um, is directing. I've directed plenty of plays and, and projects in the theater. Uh, I would like to uh, start directing on some of the television shows that I do uh, and I'd like to direct this screenplay of Time on Fire. So, um, you know, that's going to require probably a commitment of time on my part to sort of uh, gain some of the skills and demonstrate to people that, that, that I'm equipped to do that. Uh, and hopefully when I'm, when I'm willing to do that, they'll be willing to reciprocate. So what's next for you after you finish your book tour? Um, well, that'll take me into the winter, and I don't really know. Uh, probably some downtime with my family. Um, I have a 20-month-old daughter uh, who I don't see as much as my wife yeah. and, and the nanny see her. I mean, and my wife and the nanny both speak Italian to her, so uh, my daughter is very conversational in Italian but doesn't speak English. And I think because I spend a lot of time in the office in our house, she thinks I'm the foreign shipping clerk <laughs> in the back room. Um, but probably I'll have, unless something else comes up, the winter fairly free before going back to work on Californication in the spring. Thank you very much for yeah, sitting sure. down with Thank us you. tonight. It was great to Pleasure. meet you. Thanks Thank very you. much.